what size this is H and E's here. So this is about a PC I used to have. Um, I, my first, my, I think my second Windows XP machine was actually one off of eBay, and they bought parts. I used to have a Star Trek one where I don't think I just I just looked and I couldn't find the case. But back in the early two thousands, I think two thousand one or so, um, I went to a place, a PC sale place where they had. PC components and gaming components, all that for on sale, and um, back then that that was Intel PM3, PM4, and all that, and um, that's why right before Windows Vista came out, about at least five years prior, and um, that case did have some nice features. Well, it only had two lights basically. On the very front, there were two strips of blue lights. Uh, um, pure LED lights and um, that PC eventually got outdated and, um, and it's only one gigahertz so it wasn't real fast and didn't have a lot of you know high speed storage on that the second XP machine was from eBay my dad bought a custom uh, motherboard that was a Asus I think it was like only a four gigs to max I could put in that machine of RAM or DR1 plus it had um, they bought a case with it that was custom, even more better, and it was had blue it had a blue LED fan on on the right on the left side of the case with a seat transparent window with metal going on each side horizontal with the you know how it looks like a fan design and all that back in the day, and it did have lights in the front and it did have a thing where you had to pull the thing off to get to the DVD DVD drive and wherever else. And that computer did have the, my first AMD uh, processor that was around 2 gigahertz for what they could afford. And had about 1 gig of RAM. So about 512 each of that RAM in an ATI video card that was around 128 megs or so. It was a little better than the other one, but it lasted, I don't know, like 5-6 years. And then somehow my cousin put sand or so, I think it was like sugar in my computer case he was at that point in time where he was just doing stupid stuff and uh, he ruined it but then I was trying to get something and then the entire computer went crashing down and at that, at that point in time I decided I didn't want a custom computer and I ended up Vista was becoming more popular back then and I did get HP from them but it cost a lot. It was about $800, $700. Had no custom line or anything like that. It was just basic, you know. Had on premium on it. Had uh, 2.3 gigs. Uh, AMD Live CPU, which is quicker than, the, well, slower than this one. A lot slower. But the Windows XP machine was pretty quick at times. It's my, it was my first, you know, 64-bit machine where I can do double the speed and uh, that processor back then is like two, three hundred dollars for um, AMD back then. That wasn't the live series, of course. And then the Vista machine only had about 128 megs of real memory on built-in um, Nvidia, so that was the slowest I ever had. Couldn't run games real good. Had about two gigabytes of RAM of DR2, around 600 megahertz or more. And that could have went up to 8, but we never maxed that out. And uh, currently, it's somewhere else, wherever they we sold it at, at the charge sale, because it wasn't worth it anymore. It's getting old, and basically, it, it lasted a while. I did have, back in the day when we had Vista and all these security issues, they were huge. I mean, more on reliability issues than anything. And with that crashing a lot and having that transparency effects on the windows and the taskbar having those kind of black effects. Translucent as well and those gadgets back in the day. And uh, I did eventually get Windows 7 on that machine with a different video card that was a lot more popular for 512 megs of RAM. But it wasn't enough for some games. So that lasted another couple of years. And then I got... Uh, uh, Windows 8 machine at Walmart, you know, with my wherever else, uh, and during the Christmas season, and that was 
my first one with Intel HD graphics, and that machine crashed a bunch. Even with Windows 10 on it these days, it would still be on live. And that was an i3 back then. We're thinking about 8 gigabytes of DR3. I can I can go at the same storage on the 16 gigs of memory, but that one's up, that one's one was upgradable, and it was only an all-in-one, so you couldn't technically upgrade the video card or anything like that. But it allowed me. It allowed, if I still had it, the audio graphics, the audio itself would not be real good. It would cut out at times, and you know, not work. So it was touch screen as well as being, well. Not real slow. It's, it was fast back then. But it crashed a lot. Often. And when I got it, there was no start menu. There was literally no way to get to my programs. And then when they came out with a Windows 8.1, it wasn't much different. It had a start menu back, but it didn't really work, technically. It just... It's a blank box and basically did something else that you didn't need. Then here comes Windows 10, and it brings all that back, as well as being modern more, and then being, you know, dark, you know, themed as well, so, um, uh, translucent effects eventually later on, but I haven't really used it for a while, so, uh, not since I've been on this computer, so, I think it'd be a good OS, but, um, I gotta save some money. I gotta get some things worked on in the house. I gotta try to save as much as I can while affording what I can. And um, those computers weren't cheap. That first AMD one, I think it was around a thousand plus dollars, um, not including the monitor. It did have a DVD drive, so I could run Windows Vista on it, and it'd probably be fine. But um, it wasn't PCI Express. It wasn't the current gen. It was like the AGP, wherever it was. Um, those are rarely rare online. You don't see those anymore. And my cousin did have a faster computer, but he was a little younger than me. But he had like a PM4 uh, Windows XP. And back then, the Windows they put on it wasn't fully a full copy of Windows. They had to keep reactivating the Windows. Because that's how Windows was back then with Windows XP. And I think they had a starter, I believe, and they had to keep reactivating, and I basically had the full pro version, basically, you know, think about it, for several computers, basically, over the time. So I got this, uh, they eventually got it settled and better, more updates came out, and it got better. And I think it was a little bit before that, I got into the PS3 era, where it was like $600 for a console that was translated, had Glossy black finish as well as the uh, Mia Fuss for like SD cards and all that. Uh, they took that way down the road for the consoles. I think my original one could could play PS2 and PS1, which it could, because it had all those chips in it from the previous PlayStation consoles. And um, you don't need a PS3 fat to play PS1 games. The PS3 I had until my parents needed to give it back to my sister because the, their data was on it. Um, could play PS1 games. There's a PS3 Slim. And that had 160 gigs of, of storage, of course. But those consoles were notorious for overheating. And I did actually have one that died on me. And it was actually my original one from eBay for, you don't want to know this, $800. I know we spent all the That's how much it was back then. With good warranty and all that, and uh, it it basically eventually yo lighted on us, so we'd pay like I think it was like I passed a hundred dollars, hundred forty dollars for Sony to actually refurbish the unit. So I was like going off of that because my aunt said, "Hey, uh, refurbish is fine. They'll give you new components, basically fix it up for you." Um, those two didn't last. I see the first one died within ninety days of warranty, so I got a new one. Same thing happened again, so I gave up after that and saying, hey, this is not worth it, spending money for Sony, that I would have sent to Microsoft, because simply, I bought things with PSN Plus that were discounted, so since I don't have PSN Plus, I can't use those games, which really sucks, because that's 60 bucks I have to pay up front. 
to put it on my console to play all those other games I saved on with the membership. So that's like Microsoft get allows Microsoft allows you to keep your discounted games all you bought, even the regular ones without a discount on your console without having to pay up front for Xbox Live Gold. Because you don't have to worry about that. And that's why, that's why I like Microsoft better now these days. Even if I started as a PS1 fan, a PS2, PS3, and PS4, Xbox, a little past PS3 era for me, I got the 360 Elite originally, and that, that first one eventually overheated and had to get another one. But since I got that second one, it never has stopped working. It still works to this day, if I use it, of course. But, yeah, those were... The console is usually loud when I power it up because it's, try it's trying to get all that hot air out of there. And it's one of those old generations where you had the old fat uh, drive, and the, apparently this drive is jammed, so I can't technically get my DVDs out of there, my games. And this, my when I bought it, it didn't come with Wi-Fi uh, dongles. I had to buy one separately. That was like a hundred bucks back in the day, back in two thousand nine or two thousand eight, and um, I think it's like two thousand nine. 100 bucks from Walmart, wireless, 2.4, not much faster than the current, a lot slower than the current gen consoles, by the way, but it did work, it made, it did make it wireless and made it easier to use, and, um, I think Xbox Live back in the day, I think it was like $50 a, a year, I used to pay several of those over years of time, and then they eventually jacked it, jacked it up to $60, and Sony, did this in a very quick way, and then rose the price up to sixty dollars a year for twelve months. When it used to be fifty, when it, when the PS4 came out, so um, I had to say Sony <laughs> allowed people to play their games that they bought with their own money, even if they you, you use your discount for the PS Plus if you gave them a discount. Get, I don't get I don't get how I can explain this to them. It'd be thankful and nice if we could. I could play my games. I bought it with the membership for cheaper, but no. That's why I just completely refuse to buy anything through Sony because um, it ain't right. I purchased those things with my credit card and um, or my money wherever I spend it with, and um, I should have the rights to play it regardless. But no, I gotta pay sixty bucks. Or I think it's like three months. It's like fifteen, twenty dollars. Um, it ain't worth it. It just it ain't worth paying for this. I mean, once that wears that runs out, well, I'm back again. And um, it ain't worth spending money on sales because you're gonna be locked out if you have PS Plus and you use that discount on those days to see these great sales. If that membership expires, you're out of luck. That I that game or that item is locked until you renew your PS Plus membership, which I highly recommend don't, because it's not right. And it used to be free with the PS3 back in the day, believe it or not. So, uh, if you're new to the channel and you like this kind of stuff, subscribe to my channel as well and like, and it really helps this channel get going, because this is all why I used to do back in the day, you know. They used to not charge for online play. But then they just start charging, <laughs> and then also offer season passes, which I refuse to pay because there are much, much as game, if more than the game, and costs for that one thing for the season pass, and it only lasts like a year, right? So it's like, no, no, that started with the PS3, and then they were always between the PS3 and the PS4. Yeah, they were transitioning to the PS4 at the time, and um. I would never pay for those things. I never played for trials for online because I thought it's not worth spending money. You're just charging for an extra item that used to be included for free that now you have to pay for that and play, pay for online play as well. So that's another double ripoff hitting you in the head. So, uh, yeah. That's something about Sony I don't like about Sony anymore. I just refuse to play the thing that much anymore. I play Xbox, uh, Xbox One all the time. Remember, I'm here, you know, every now and then. But sometimes chores have to be done. So, you know, if you're older or adult, chores got to be done for the house. So, thanks for watching.